The story grabbing global attention right now is one that we talked about a little bit at the top of the show. The sight of a commercial jetliner having been pieced back together. The Dutch Safety Board determining it was a ground-based missile that struck Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 over the Ukraine, littering the skies with 298 bodies. A missile, they say, was fired by Russian-backed rebels shooting at anything. The Russians? They, of course, deny they had anything to do with it. Our first guest, resident scholar, director of Russian studies at the American Enterprise Institute, Dr. Leon Aaron. Joined by former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, author of the new book, Architects of Disaster, The Destruction of Libya, Pete Hoekstra. Gentlemen, I want to thank you both for being here. We only have a few minutes. I want to make sure we get a lot in here. Pete, any doubt in your mind whatsoever right now? Vladimir Putin and the Russians are laughing at the rest of the world, saying, go ahead, do your worst. You can't touch us. I think that's exactly what they're doing. I mean, clearly what's happening in the Middle East, whether it's in Syria, engaging with Iran, engaging with Egypt, you know, they're getting their way. They're doing the same thing in Ukraine. Uh, I'm not sure the, Russia, the rest of the world is laughing, but they're very concerned about this emergence of Russia. Dr. Aaron, let's get then to what happened here, because the Russians say it wasn't our missile. We had nothing to do with it. They're basically laughing at all these various United Nations committees and everybody else around the world who may still be looking to find them guilty. Any doubt in your mind whatsoever here that the Russians bear responsibility for this, but there is absolutely no way they'll be able to catch Putin in the game? Well, it's a Russian-made missile. Um, they did supply them to the rebels. Uh, don't forget that 16 airplane and helicopters were shot down by similar missiles uh, during the uh, days preceding the uh, uh, Malaysian airline disaster. Uh, the reaction from the Russian uh, analysts right away was that those who fired that missile are certainly not legally uh, uh, with us, uh, maybe not even physically with us anymore. So the the um, the investigation is going to stall right there. Let me stop you there for just a second, what you just said. And again, I know I, I might be talking about conspiracies here, but it almost sounds as if, look, the old Russia would have gotten rid of any evidence that they are possibly could have been out there, and they might have taken care of making sure that certain people couldn't talk. Do you think that Putin has already covered his tracks in that sense? Uh, I think it's, it's, it's not an, uh, an issue of what, but an issue of how. I mean, these people are long gone, uh, into hiding if they're lucky, or maybe worse if they're not. Pete, what then can the world do? Not just the United States, and the United Nations seems pretty impotent when it comes to things like this, but what can they do to push this forward? Anything at all as sanctions? What, what's next? Well, I think the first option would be sanctions, uh, but Western Europe, the UN, the U.S., have shown a total unwillingness to engage Russia in any constructive and meaningful way to get Russia to change their behavior. I don't expect that that's going to change. Is there any doubt in your mind, Pete, we haven't talked about Ukraine in a long time here. Between Syria, Middle East, everything else that's talked about, what's going on in the Ukraine right now? This is still an area that Russia has basically conquered, yes? Uh, absolutely. They've, they're solidifying their position in the parts of Ukraine that they have occupied. And if we're not careful, and if the Ukrainians aren't careful, the Russians will seek to expand their influence in that part of the world again. They've gotten away with it this time. They've gotten away with it a couple of times. If given the opportunity, you know, in the right circumstances, they will do it again. Dr. Aaron, about 45 seconds left. With what he's doing in Syria now, still looking at the Ukraine, Vladimir Putin is expanding the Russian sphere of influence. Does he have the backing back at home? Does he have the will? Does he have the money and the time to be able to try and become once again the world dominator that he wants to be? Well, he uh, certainly has the support at home. The economy is nosediving. But that doesn't matter at this point because the country sees this in this patriotic fervor. And that's why, like a man on the bicycle, or I prefer a man sitting on the tiger, he has to choose one target of opportunity after another. And given the behavior um, of the United States, we're essentially leaving the doors open for the thief to come in. 298 people lost their lives in what absolutely is something that Russia bears responsibility for. And unfortunately, the world can't catch him, or at least can't prove it to his satisfaction. Dr. Leon Aaron, Pete Hoekstra, gentlemen, thanks so much for being here for a couple of minutes. Thank it's you. an ongoing story. We will continue to follow it. And again, we will continue to follow this as Putin decides that he wants to be the king. Who's there to stop him? Well, we do have some bad news here because there is one sign of the king, at least here in America, that has been stopped cold. 
a sure sign of the male apocalypse. It's next, right here on The Hardline.